All right. Hello, everyone. This is your introductory video to the ethics course in the counseling program here at WNMU. This is the text that we will be using, uh, Ethical, Legal, and Professional Issues in Counseling. It's the sixth edition. It's yellow. Previous editions are different colors. So uh, this is the text. I want to go through, uh, I'll introduce myself, and then we'll go through the syllabus and take a look at some of the assignments and some of the policies that I have for this class. So my name is Dr. Lane. I am originally from California. I did all my education, all my college education in Idaho though. Um, I enjoy the outdoors. I enjoy mountain biking, hiking. I enjoy fitness. I enjoy playing sports uh, and I enjoy helping people and serving people. And um, so I think that's part of what got me into the counseling field is that desire to help others and, and that good feeling that I get when I help people. So some of my clinical experiences uh, in the school systems, as well as working with children who've been sexually abused, as well as working for a uh, agency where I had more freedom and being able to see lots of uh, different clients from different um, demographics and um, uh, age groups and, and backgrounds and ethnicities and all that stuff. So that was really awesome. So that's a little bit about me and, and my background and where I come from and, and what I like to do. So now I'll share the syllabus and go through that with you now. So again, this is for Counseling 501, the counseling profession, legal, ethical, and professional issues. So this is an online course. Uh, my information can be found here. There's my office number, my email. Don't forget to add the JR. Uh, I have had some instances where I have not received emails from individuals. Uh, so make sure you include that JR there. I am a junior, another interesting fact about me. So, and these are my office hours. Uh, pretty much, um, I should be available between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. anytime Monday through Thursday. I, I may also respond to emails on the weekend or evenings. I may, well, we'll see. It, usually if it's a really, really pressing issue, I'll do my best to respond. I, I also try to set boundaries too, to work and then rest. So these are my definite work times. Um, again, here's the book. Let's go through some of this. I do want you all to be aware that uh, it is important that when you do post your assignments that you post that you do post them to Canvas and you post it to the assignment before the assignment closes um, because I, I will not accept assignments that are posted in the comments or I will not accept assign assignments that are emailed to me. I need you to submit them to their assignment, to the assignment in Canvas. These are the assignments and I can review each one, especially the major ones in greater detail as, as we get closer to them. But we'll have this first video introduction that I'd like to have you all video yourself, introducing yourself and answering some of these questions here, and then responding to at least one of your classmates and showing them that, that you're also interested in who they are and not just the content of the class. So that'll be your first assignment video introduction. Then you'll have four reading reflections where you just reflect on, on the reading and, and your life and how it applies to you and what's important from the reading. You have four of those. You'll have five reading discussions where it's basically a reading reflection, but I want you, there's more um, posting to your classmates. So there's three, three responses that I'll ask you to provide to your classmates along with that reading reflection. There'll be an APA formatting assignment. I have created a video to help you better understand APA formatting. 
So please review that as well as reviewing APA formatting, whether you have this, this text or whether you can Google what APA formatting is. And then there'll be a little assignment for you to, to do after you've done that. Then there's uh, reading assessments. These are a little more simple. There's five of them. You rate how well you were able to complete the reading from zero to 10, 10 being you completed all of it. And then just ask you to briefly reflect and provide three thoughtful questions that you have from the reading. Then we have ethical three ethical case studies. I'll provide you with three cases and you'll apply the, the uh, ACA uh, code of ethics as well as some law, as well as, well as other aspects. And there'll be three of these. The first one will be a 1500 page paper um, going through that case. The second one will be uh, another paper, but I'm not having a, a word count on that. You do not have to reach 15 words like you do, 1500 words like you do on the first one, you just have to cover the content. So I'll just be grading it on that. The third one is um, a video presentation where you present what you would have written in a paper through video. So those are the ethical case studies. And then I also ask you to do an ethical uh, or an ethics interview, requesting that you interview a licensed counselor. So there are multiple professions that provide therapy or that provide counseling or that provide um, mental health to individuals. There's marriage and family therapists, there's social workers, there's psychologists, psychiatrists to agree to a degree provide this. But I, I want you, this is this is a this is a program, um, this is a counseling program. You are learning about counselors. So you will need to research a licensed counselor licensed counselor in your area so again social workers provide counseling and they might call themselves counselors but they're not licensed counselors or licensed social workers but they still provide counseling but this is a counseling program so please find a licensed counselor for this um, for this assignment and you'll interview them and then you'll write up a 1500 word paper so there's a breakdown of the points for the assignments. If you're if you turn something in late and uh, let me inform you that you you can turn things in on turn things in late, but the assignments will close when uh, after they're due. So you can't unless you reach out to me. So but every day that something is late each day you're going to get 10 percent off so make sure you do submit it before it is it, it is due um but like i said too you can turn things in late just you will have to make sure that you reach out to me so i reopen the assignment so you can submit it because again you, you can't turn it in to me late through email or through the comments. You're gonna to have to reach out and say, hey, can you reopen the assignment? I will reopen it and then you can turn it, turn it in. So, but definitely be mindful that it is 10% off for every day that it's late. So as soon as it's as soon as 11:59 p.m. turns to 12 a.m., that will be the first day and you will get 10 points off if it's if it's late. Um, if you need any help with scholarly writing please reach out to smart think and, and get a tutor that's also partly why i provided that video um, to help you better understand professional writing as it pertains to apa formatting which is what the, the counseling profession uses um, let's see i'm scrolling through here note about academic integrity if i see if i see copy and paste or plagiarism the first infraction, you will get a significant reduce in that assignment's grade. And I will let you know that this looks like plagiarism to me. So please, please be, be careful. Please review that APA formatting video um, to make sure that you know how to cite other people and other people's work. Let's see. 
Also, where is the, the disability support services? If, if you need any type of accommodations, please reach out to them. Um, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, beard hair in my mouth. So please reach out to them and then they'll reach out to me and let me know what your accommodations need to be. Um, now we'll go through this class schedule. So this semester is a little different due to COVID where the university wanted to start later and uh, not have a spring break so that people don't leave the university and come back with COVID since we're an online program. I tried to be as adaptive to you all as best I could. So we don't start, uh, the university does start um, classes on January 19th. So um, does start then, but uh, no assignments due until the 25th. But I did have to condense things quite a bit. And I, I am still allowing you a spring break here. So spring break where nothing's due, you don't have to do anything. I think it's okay that you all take a spring break because even if you do travel and even if you do contract COVID, which I hope and pray that none of you do, um, but if you do, you're not going to give it to any of your peers because we don't meet in person. So I figured it would be okay if you still had a spring break. So you will still have a spring break and we will still start later, but that means some things are crammed a little bit. So a couple of weeks, you'll, there'll be two chapters um, to read instead of one. So you're reading reflection or whatever assignment that is that's due that week. It will be regarding those two chapters. So, and I have here modules. There are 14 modules and the way I do it is there's a module guide. So you have to click on the guide to know uh, what is being required of you for that week to know what chapter, or you can just, you can go into to here to the, the syllabus and the class schedule to know what's required as well. So this will be what you're supposed to read by January 25th. And then also what you're supposed, the assignments you're supposed to do by January 25th, 11.59 p.m. So, and the way, I don't have assignment, the assignment tabs opened in Canvas, so what you have to do is you have to go into the modules, and I've linked in the module guides the assignments. So you have to click on the links in the module guides to get to these assignments. Or I know there's that thing on the top right that says what's coming up. I know I've been told that many people just go off of that, so you can also, I guess, just go off of that, but know that those assignments, um, there's some things that I ask you to do that aren't necessarily an assignment, like reading is not always an assignment, but there is an assignment connected to the reading. So anyway, that's that. Then I also have rubrics included here. So make sure that for each assignment, you're, you're looking at the rubric and, um, doing the assignment according to the rubric. And each rubric I have here, for instance, reading reflections, the word count. Uh, if you get less than 350 words and you get 325 words, you'll get 5% off of that grade. Um, and so I've included what percentage off of each grade that you'll um, get if you don't do it to the, to the full requirements. And again, so the full above expectations or the full requirements are here on the far right and no demonstration or the least amount of following the directions is here on the left. So go through each one of those um, and see how you should do each assignment. And then also for the ethics interview, I have this appendix C, which is your informed consent and permission to record. So if you do want to record your ethics interview so that you can remember, it helps you better remember what, what the interviewee said, um, then you can record. But I ask that you provide this to the counselor that you're going to interview. So that's a little bit about the course. I'm excited to get to know you all a little bit better and that you get to know each other a little bit better through the course and that you understand better the counseling field and the counseling profession and maybe how it's different and what our ethics are and what we do and how, how we are best able to help individuals because really that's what um, ethics is put in place 
it's put in place to protect us as professionals, but ultimately too, and what's really important and what our main goal is to protect our clients and to help our clients and to not harm our clients um, as we work with them. And so understanding the, the American Counseling Association's ethical codes is super important and it's a, a really big part of this course. So making sure that, that you access that code and that you reference it through multiple um, aspects of these assignments and understand it um, so that you can end up knowing what you're going to be expected to do as a professional counselor and and how how you're going to be expected to interact with clients and others um, in that in that role so thank you all for listening and if you have any questions please call me or uh, we can set up a zoom chat or you can definitely email as email me as well so thanks for listening and i will see you all later